Hey everyone, Jeffrey here, and in today's video, I'm going to plant some spider plants, then run over to my rental house to look at the yard because I might have to mow it. I'll bring you along to see just a little bit of it because the tenants just moved out and it's going to be a big clean out. Um, then later, I want to finally start planting some tomato plants and a few other plants in some pots and in the ground and start on this circular little flower bed I have that used to be where a tree once was that I had taken down. All right, let me get started. This year, I decided to do an all spider plant bed out in my front yard. I have a few plants that need to be repotted, and they already have shoots coming up with babies. Plus, I have six or seven in the house that I'm water propagating. They're definitely ready to plant. I've started off with these two in the terracotta pots. I already put soil on them to help speed up the video, but I still had to add a little bit more. This mix of soil is just regular potting soil that I added peat moss to. Spider plants can grow pretty much in any kind of soil, and for these, the roots will probably take over this entire pot by the end of summer. Spider plants love the water, and make sure you water them daily, especially the ones like mine outside in the summer. Progress. Two bigger plastic pots that I got last year that I love the colors on. A bronze pot with a gold band. And now it's time to make a quick afternoon yard check at my rental property that I call the 1939 house. I call it that because it was built in 1939 and I like history on things. Huge pine trees in the front that fill the windows through the screens I found out. The tenants just moved out a couple days ago and they have a little box left and that's about it uh, full of things. They left it really dirty. So I'll give you a little sneak peek for now because I'm finally doing a series on a rental house move out. So be sure to look for that. Selfish plug, haha. And through the front door is the dining area on one side and living room on the other that has two closet built-ins. It's going to be the first room I paint because it's the biggest and I want to get it over with. The front yard I can do with the trimmer because it's only high in spots, but the backyard is going to have to be mowed. Here's a little look back at a brick haul a couple videos ago that I did. 
I made a few little things in my backyard, like some plant borders to edge a few areas. I'm replacing white stone with brick back there so I can bring the white stone to my front yard. Today is tomato plant planting day. I have four different tomato plants, four different varieties. The first one I'm going to put in a pot on my patio, and then the other three I'm going to put in this bricked border I put out in my backyard. First I'm going to put cardboard to suppress the grass and a little bit of weeds in there, and then put some mulch over it, and then plant the plants. And here are the four tomato plants. I have a big beef, a husky cherry red, a Cherokee purple, and the fourth one is a Bonnie original. There's a nice breeze and I can smell that honeysuckle. So anyway, can you tell that I added one more row of brick on top? <laughs> Just to make it a little bit higher. 
some people like to add their or plant their tomato plants at an angle that way they can take advantage of the roots that grow off of the main stem then they grow up straight but I'm not gonna do that I'm gonna plant them deep the rule of thumb is that you want to plant them about two-thirds of the way down and remove the bottom leaves because you don't want those touching the soil because they'll cause mildew and they're like a little bridge for bugs to walk up on your plant. I have the indeterminate type tomatoes. There are indeterminate and there are determinate. The indeterminate pretty much produce fruit all growing season long. The determinate tomato plants produce pretty much all at one in one set. So I'm gonna plant these in and then I brought out some cardboard. I'm gonna try that to put it down around the plants to suppress some of the grass and the weeds. Those scissors over there, they're just for cutting some roots that I ran into. I don't know where they're coming from. Probably the vines that grow wild around here. All right, let me get started. I got them all planted in and I think they look great up against that red mulch that I used. It really brings the green out. So up in a pot I have the Bonnie Tomato Plant Original and then back in this bed I have the Husky Cherry Red, the Big Beef, and the Cherokee Purple. Now I am going to put chicken wire around these because of the critters. The squirrels and rabbits will definitely get into them if I don't.
and the last plants from my little plant haul last week from a fair is five small lavender plants, one basil plant, and one small lettuce plant. And I'm just going to put them all in pots. Now, like I said, I'm going to put my lavender in pots. I have five of them. They are French lavender. The ideal size for pretty much all lavender is 12 to 16 inch pots. But in my case, they're only going to be out there for the summer. So I have seven inch clay pots that I'm going to use. Uh, the lavender I have back in my backyard are English lavender. I don't know if you can see. And then the ones planting today are French lavender and they have a little bit of a different look to them. Um, you want the golden rule for soil is 70% compost and 30% some kind of grit or horticultural sand. Um, you need well-drained soil, so pots are actually perfect for that. Um, they say to water them about every two weeks. They do like it dry, but when they're little, they take a lot of water, especially in pots at the beginning. So you're going to want to give them a little bit of water. I hate to tell you how much, but what I do for the 7-inch pots is about half inch or half a cup of water every day because they'll wilt and they'll let you know whenever they need water. 70% uh, compost, 30% some kind of sand, well-drained soil. Oh, and uh, they need a lot of sun. You're going to want to do six to eight hours is best, actually, of uh, sun per day. All right, let me get started. It's finally time for a little upgrade to this area that's just out in the middle of my front yard. It's where a giant oak tree once stood that I had taken out a few years back. It was causing damage to my roof and to tell you the truth, I do not miss the leaves. Since I'm replacing the white stone I have in my backyard with brick from the brick hall, I can bring some to the front and make a little plant border. For the summer, I'm putting the five lavender plants here to see how they do. If they bloom ag again later, I might just go ahead and plant them here. We'll see what happens. All 
All right, guys, I hope you like this video and I will see you in the next one.